How do you jumpstart a dead battery? Do you still carry around the tried and true jumper cables in your vehicle to jumpstart vehicles? Or have you resulted in newer technology such as jumpstart boxes? Well, they're not all the same. And we're here to show you by opening up each one of these and showing what's different inside and how they work. Which of these is your go-to solution for jump-starting a dead battery? Well, prior to just a, a decade or so ago, this was probably your solution for most everyone. In fact, most pickup trucks always had a set of jumper cables laying somewhere in the bed or maybe even behind the seat in many cars as well. Uh, and these are still a viable source. By all means, hooking up a set of jumper cables to a good battery and jumping off a bad battery, not a bad solution whatsoever. And also letting that alternator on the other vehicle charge that dead battery as well, not a bad solution. However, when you start dealing with late model electronics and alternators and really overstressing a lot of those components, you can do some damage. We're not going to talk bad about jumper cables, but let's take those out of the equation for now. Because for one, you have to have another vehicle. So unless you have another vehicle and you have a set of jumper cables, you're not going anywhere. Now these three solutions, these can be used without another good vehicle or without another good battery nearby. And you can successfully jump those dead batteries off or jump those dead cars off and get on your way again, as long as it's not your alternator that is the issue. And all of these are pretty much compact enough to, again, go in some cubby hole or in an area that's uh, inconspicuous and stay out of the way. This would be the largest one and heaviest one right here, uh, but the Ryobi's a little bit smaller. And then, of course, these uh, little small jump starter packs they work great as well and stay in pouches and little cubby holes, whatever. What is the difference between these three? Because there are some pretty vast differences between these three here, and we can even bring more into the equation, but I think these three kind of sum up uh, a lot of the late model jump charging solutions or jump starter solutions. So what we're going to do is dig into each one of these and explain what you get, and then maybe in the end, we'll actually sum it up and give what our recommendation would be. So let's start with this little jump starter pack here. And this really doesn't matter what the name brand is on here, because this is going to be pretty much the same as all the ones you may see on Amazon or maybe in even some of the box stores, maybe even TikTok shop, uh, you name it, these jump starter packs that are kind of this size, whether they say they're 3,000 watts, 6,000 watts, 1,000 watts, whatever. They're built a lot the same, unless it says capacitor on it, then that's going to be a different issue. But for the most part, kind of operate the same way. We're gonna remove the cables here, and let's get this apart. All right, I'll probably kind of speed up this process because they're all gonna be a bit different, but in this case, there's just these rubber plugs that are hiding each one of these Torx screws, and I believe they're T8 fasteners, if I'm not mistaken. So here we have uh, this jump starter pack opened, and I'm going to use something to pry this up. I do not recommend you doing this, by the way, and if you do something like this, then definitely try to use something non-conductive to do what I'm doing here. And you're definitely going to avoid any warranties for sure. So what we have here is nothing more than a lithium battery pack, a very potent lithium battery pack. As you can see here, it's just kind of stuck down to this board here. There's a little sticky tape right there and then a pad right there, and then some large cables going here, probably a relay right there, uh, and then some capacitors, and then here's your USB ports and your jump start port and all that. So there's really not a lot of electronics going on other than the battery pack that's providing all of that charge. So it's dumping these lithium batteries into that charge and what they're claiming at 3,000 amps. When you really look into it, I think it's probably a... 600 amp, 500 amp, something like that. Let's see, yeah, six, uh, starting current 
even though they will uh, advertise it, and this is any of them, this is not just one specific, uh, even though they advertise it as a 3000 amp, I believe this says starting current 600 amps for three seconds. So it will basically dump that 600 amps uh, in three seconds and then it's not gonna be able to do that anymore. So it's not gonna sustain a 600 amp output for eternity or even for 60 seconds. And there you have it. So pretty simple, a lot of electronics going on, but other than that, a lithium battery pack that is providing all the umph. Now these do seem to be pouch cells. So in other words, kind of like your cell phone batteries, I really don't feel any cylindrical cells. Like cylindrical cells would be your typical tool batteries. Some of the tool batteries have gone to like a stack pack or a, uh, a pack type of battery, but for the most part, they're cells. Uh, where you see a lot of packs is like cell phones, laptops, um, RC cars, things like that. You'll see a lot of the the pack or the you know the flat pack technology if you will and i believe that's what this is because as i mentioned i really don't feel any of the round cylindrical shapes i really don't care to cut into that to, to kind of prove it to you but bottom line is we've got a lithium battery pack that's providing all the power let's move this aside now we've got a DeWalt uh, jump starter pack, and this does a little more than just jump starting it. You can actually plug in your 120 volt plugs to power some things. Uh, you can, it has an onboard compressor, as well as you can plug in USB as well. So you have AC power, um, you can check an alternator, you have a light on the back side, um, and then as I mentioned, an air compressor as well where you can program. So various things you can do with this as well as jump start a battery you can see from the cables right here on the end i by the way we've reviewed this one so you can find the review on it and it worked very well um, in fact all of these jump starter packs jump started our 454 truck with a completely dead battery the same dead batteries in it right now. Uh, the motor is just fine, but it's literally got a completely dead battery. So all three of these jump starters had no problem cranking and starting that truck uh, with a absolutely dead battery and it did, they did them over and over. So it's not a question of can these do it? They've all done it. There may be some diesels they can't start, but just letting you know, uh, all three of these had successfully started completely dead vehicles. So we have the jumper cables on one side or the cables on one side. And then on the other side, we have a compressor or an airline. But let's go ahead and get this apart and see what's different about the DeWalt. Now, DeWalt also makes several different jump starter packs. This just happens to be one of them that we have. So the DeWalt is interesting. It's using some pretty old technology. Uh, it's using a 12 volt, 21 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Uh, this would be something that's uh, kind of like in a, what would be in a power wheels or in an uninterruptible power source or UPS, something that backs up your computers as far as the power going to your computers. This is the type of battery that would be in there. A lot of your, uh, um, your kind of scooters that uh, uh, some people ride in, in some of the stores same type of thing you can turn this all around it's not going to leak any fluid or shouldn't leak any fluid but it's a sealed lead acid battery and it's not outputting a ton of amps so it can't be handling all of the jump starting power it's having to rely on something else also since we know we can plug 120 volt plugs into this obviously there's an inverter going on this right here is your compressor you see the small piston right there Going up and down, little motor right there, just a little canned uh, brushed motor. 
And yeah, so basically just electronics happening here. There's no, uh, no capacitors in here. Um, there's no additional lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries that are providing any more voltage. Uh, just as I was mentioning, I'm assuming we're definitely going from DC to AC for the inverter and, and plugging in things. And maybe we're stepping back down to DC again to provide uh, that dump of the, uh, of the charge to actually jumpstart something. Somebody else that's better in the electronic side could probably explain in detail, but I'm sure that's what's happening here. We have some small capacitors here, but nothing in any large, uh, like super capacity territory uh, where we're really dumping a, a hard charge out. This must be the air compressor sensor right here. It just kind of sits loosely in there. That's interesting. Just tied around that post and sits loosely in there. Anyway, so pretty simplified setup here, but again, using a 12 volt steel lead acid battery. And by the way, this thing takes a long time to charge. So if you are low on charge, you're gonna plug this thing into a wall and you're gonna leave it for hours while it slowly charges this back up. Now let's take a look at the Ryobi. Now this is the latest from Ryobi in the world of jump starters anyway, and it utilizes an 18 volt battery. In fact, you can get it kitted with this two amp hour 18 volt battery. Now how does a small capacity like a two amp hour 18 volt battery actually jump start a vehicle and do it successfully and not just any vehicle, but big blocks, um, small diesels or pickup truck diesels, V8 diesels, and be able to do that over and over. In fact, they claim like up to 20 starts on this small battery. Well, that's interesting because we're about to find out. Now, we reviewed this one as well, and it did very well. And if you want to know all the details of, of this one, then definitely uh, check out that review also. But let's take a quick look inside and find out why. So now you can probably see what is different about the Ryobi. It's not the battery that's actually jump-starting the vehicle. It's these five capacitors that are handling the load. So if you look in here, there's three across here, and then down in there, there are two more. So that's five three-volt capacitors. So five times three is 15 volts. And if you know anything about capacitors, they're able to really dump their charge or discharge really, really quickly. They can also recharge really quickly as well. So the 18 volt battery is not actually jump starting the vehicle. The 18 volt battery is only charging the capacitors and the capacitors are then dumping the charge to the car battery and to the starting system and allowing that to jump start the vehicle. It actually works really, really well. And there are other high dollar jump starters that do the same thing from well-known battery charger companies. I love the fact that Ryobi's doing this because it's kind of a compact unit utilizing some later technology and utilizing something that you can benefit from their tool battery and basically a larger tool battery or a larger Ryobi battery. So a four amp hour, six amp hour, eight amp hour, um, you can definitely use those. You're not getting a boost in performance. You're just going to add to the number of jump starts that you can do. If it's going to jump start it, this is going to last you at least 10 jump starts. So really you can get by with a smaller battery and then recharge it and use it again. So pretty cool system. And I really like the fact that they're utilizing this type of technology. Now let's get these back together and wrap this up.
and there they're all back together. That one works. That one works. And that one works. The bottom line is, as we mentioned earlier in the video, all three of these units did absolutely fine at jump starting a vehicle with a completely dead battery. However, we do think there's some newer technology in some of these than the other. Uh, the DeWalt is just really uh, older technology using a sealed lead acid battery. We've been doing that with jump start boxes for a long time. Uh, jumping up to lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries, uh, that's definitely some newer technology. Those charges are going to last a long time. Typically, you can charge them faster. And also utilizing capacitors such as we've done in electricity for years and, and starting large motors and starting air conditioning compressors, things like that. Uh, you always have a capacitor that gives a kind of a super boost when it calls on to get that motor turning and then the, just the electricity coming in can handle the rest. So capacitors have been used for a long time. In fact, you'll see a, a lot of small capacitors on most circuit boards. Again, for the ability to dump that discharge really, really quick or to dump that charge very, very quickly and such as it's doing here in this jump box. So pricing wise, you're anywhere from, you know, 79 bucks all the way up to uh, 200 and something dollars, close to $300. And in the mid range, if you already have like tool batteries, you can get these for a hundred and something bucks. So, you know, there's pricing kind of all over the board. You can really choose what you want. You may even choose the old tried and true method of jumper cables and, and nothing wrong with that. It's just sometimes these are a pain to keep around and you're dealing with battery acid, things like that. Most of these smaller boxes even either come self-contained, have clamp areas where you can actually clamp on the the actual clamps themselves. So I like that. I like when everything's kind of contained in one area. Hey, let us know what you think about this. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.